Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to finally get to the equation that you can use to find the range thrown uh, given the counterweight mass. So when I tell you on competition day you need to throw it uh, 11 feet, you can use this equation to determine what your counterweight mass should be. We're going to have to make sure everything's in the right units though when we go to do that. So you've already created this table here with all necessary equations back when we did the uh, projectile analysis worksheet a long time ago. What I'm going to want you to do is open that sheet up and we're going to change up uh, a lot of the numbers here. We can reuse this. In the end you're going to get something like Janet and David did two years ago where you have your actual range. So this is the experimental when they're out in the field the range that they got. So range how far it threw versus the amount of mass that they had. So as their mass increased, their range increased. This is what the equation shed, said it should be. And this is actually pretty reasonable. As you can see, they, they kind of look about the same in slope. I mean, they're similar. And your actual should be a, a shorter distance than the ideal, the perfect world, the equations. Because this doesn't take into account a lot of different things, friction and bending of the materials, uh, things that we talked about before. It doesn't take air resistance into account. So what you're going to want to do is modify this old table. Um, what I'm going to want you to do is add two new columns to this. You can do a merge and center to make this look pretty. Um, I don't know if you guys put uh, a header up at the top. I always do that. It looks nicer. Remember, for borders, you can use this tool, um, all borders, no border, left, right, all those things. In this case, I want all borders. I'm going to put a new one where it is range. I would drop down, do a smaller font size when you put actual, and then go back up to the 12, and this will be in meters. We've got to keep everything in metric and these exact uh, units for your equations to work out. This we're going to go back and modify. This range was ideal, perfect world. Again, you can do a trick. You can't do subscripts for some reason in Excel. It's a real pain, so I just always make it smaller and then it looks like a subscript. Uh, if you want to fill in different color for your, your header here, you can just do that with this bucket. Not, not absolutely necessary. And the last thing I want to do is percent error. This is going to be what percent it's off from the perfect world. Um, let's do, oh, it's up to you kind of what, maybe I'll do percent E R. So percent error and let's R just is range. So percent error in the range. So you're going to fill in all of your new data. Now, I don't have it in front of me. I've forgotten what the projectile mass actually is. The marble, I wrote that up on the board. I think it was something like 0 0.00558. Double check on that. Just don't blindly put in what I'm putting right now. Your numbers are going to be different. You can do this click and drag so it replaces all of them, and you don't have to keep doing that by hand. Your counterweight mass, this is what you guys were changing up during your testing. So you're going to put that. You're going to need to add more rows. So you can do, I don't have enough space, so I'm going to have to do this trick where I do an insert and insert some in here. So if you ever run out of room because you have something down below, you can do that. So all borders and then start doing your seven, eight down the line. Um, remember to center things. Uh, use this right here to center just like you would in Word. Your uh, potential energy, kinetic energy, they are all calculated based on equations you guys did before. If you're changing your counterweight height, fill in what you measured for yours. Um, I think that's probably too big, but figure out what it is. It's got to be in meters, and then you're just going to click and drag it down because it's going to be the same for every single one, just like the marble not changing all 16. 
And you can put more data in here if you want to. Same thing, you can click and drag all this stuff down. Now that's not working because I didn't put a counterweight mass in there. So you need to put your counterweight mass in there. Um, another thing is this looks kind of silly when you have this many decimal places on there. So click all those values to right click, format cells, and your computer freezes up for some reason. Give it a second. Okay, decimal places. And make sure it's a number. Sometimes you'll have a general and you'll say, hey, what the heck, I didn't get the screen you did. Number. And then you can go to zero. And so your velocity, initial velocity is calculated. Um, launch angle, what you want is a 45 degree. So work as hard as you guys can to get it to fire at 45. So just make all of these 45. So notice it calculated the ideal range for you. You're going to put in what it was actually thrown for that counterweight. So this is what you are collecting on that test and redesign worksheet I gave you. So you're going to enter whatever that was in meters. Once again, it looks really silly to have that many decimal places. So you might want to go and change that. Your percent error, that's a new thing. That's how far off it is. You're going to do equal, put an equation in here. It's going to be your ideal minus the actual what you got in the real world. Let's put that in parentheses for our order of operations. This divided by the ideal. I can write this on the board and then times 100 to make it a percent. And let's see. Yep, that totally makes sense. Remember from before, you can click and gra grab from the corner. If you click and grab from here, that, that highlights. You got to go to the corner for the um, equation to be pulled down. It doesn't work here because, once again, there's nothing here. So it's kind of saying, hey, there's an error. You don't give me enough information. All right, once you have all of this, it's time to finally get to a graph and the equation that you guys need. I'm going to show you how to create this graph right here. Let me delete it so it's out of the way. I'm going to use Janet and David's data. Notice that's similar to what's up here. I just actually have real data here now. The master projectile is different from your guys' they used a marble that was almost twice the size, so don't screw that up. Don't put what's in here. Um, what you want to do is, it's, this isn't, I, you don't have to do it this way. You can just start a table without selecting anything. I normally just select something. We're going to graph the, the range, ideal and range actual, both of those versus the counterweight mass. So I would just grab this to start out, do an insert, I always do this scatter like this. I got lucky it put things in the right spot. Go to quick layout. This is a newer feature. I used to have to do each one of these by hand and add in each separate thing using this. Now they have this one that will add everything that I need here. Most important thing is I have a chart title. Um, label each axis with their units and then have a, a an increment here on that makes sense and then this tells you what series this is now how you go and do the data it might take me a second here because they changed everything select data there it is this newer version is nice they just every time they have a newer version they change things up a little bit it takes me a bit to get used to it but so I already have series one in here um, I want to edit that because I want the name to be, ooh, let's see, one sec. I got this in the way. I don't know which one to grab. Oh, no. Okay, that's actual. So I want to edit this series. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, got actual length. Now, if your data got all messed up, this is where you can fix it. X values is your X axis, which is the horizontal one. On that, I want the range along there. I don't know why it's not getting out of my way. I want to highlight these. Just trying to get to the right level. I don't know why the heck it won't get out of my way. I kind of screwed that up. And then the Y values, this was inverse of what it should be. Y values is going to be the counterweight mass. That is your vertical. And I put this label on here so that you can see it makes sense right here where it says actual range and that's what these are. Now what you want to do is add another series of data. This is going to be um, range, let's see, ideal range. X values, make sure you hit equals. I don't know why it, it doesn't automatically put that. It really should do that. That would be nice. And once again, I didn't move my chart out of the way, so I'm struggling a little bit to get to the right cell. You might want to move your chart so you're not right up on top of it. So my X values, and once again, Y values are the same as before. The Y values are going to be your counterweight mass. Um, hit OK. So you might have to play around and edit these. If you get things in the wrong spot, just redo it. You might mix up your X and Y. And so go back and redo this and grab the right values. But you want your X to be your range in both cases and your Y to be your counterweight mass. That was the hardest part. Now you want to right click on your data here. Um, actually, we're not concerned about the um, ideal. Before I had them find the ideal equation, we don't really even need that. So add a trend line. Um, linear will work well and then this is very important display equation on chart this is what we've been working towards is getting this equation this is very important this is what I want is that equation I can resize this graph so it's a little bit easier to read and I'll pull it down here now I would go in here and make it clear. Our Y value is counterweight. Um, actually, let's just do mass of the counterweight equals this times range. I would put this symbol. So what this is saying is if I tell you the range, and I, in this case, I'd have to give it to you in meters, or you convert it to meters for this to work. Let's say I say uh, throw it three meters. You will plug three meters into this equation, and this will spit out in kilograms what your counterweight should be to throw that distance. So this is very important. I would put it kind of near that data. Now, for some reason, my title went away. So I'm going to go back. This is where you can add individual things in. Um, I want to do my chart title. And I want it above. So call this range versus counterweight mass. And then you always have to label your titles. This is going to be um, your range in meters. Always put what the units are in parentheses. And then this rotated here, this is going to be your counter. Wait, mass, and then that's in kilograms. Looks nice, doesn't it? So now that you got this, um, I feel like there was one other thing I wanted to show you with this. Um, let's see, what was it? Pretty good. This can be copied and pasted onto uh, into like a Word document, for instance. 
Um, gosh, I really think there was something else I needed to show you, but maybe not. So you got your equation, you got the, the line, you got your, oh, this is what I was forgetting. Notice how silly this looked with all these extra zeros. So you can right click on these and do format axis. Oh, okay, it goes over here. They change things, okay? I'm not being silly, it's just they change things on me here. Now, what you want to do, oh, let's see, number. Number of decimal places, um, it doesn't really make sense to put any on here. All right, so that makes it look a lot nicer. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 um, meters on here. And then you want to change this up to the same thing. Um, it's not the same thing because you do want one decimal place on this one. There you go. Looks real nice and neat. That's all you got to do, and then you're ready for the competition.